Hey everybody, welcome back to another video from Dog Focus Training. I'm Brian and today we're going to talk about Just Jordan 33's choice of a mini Australian Shepherd. We're going to talk about all the things she did right when she first brought the puppy home. A couple of things that maybe I would have done a little different. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button if you love all things dogs. Uh, and if there's something you learned from this video, make sure you give us a like along the way. Thanks and let's, uh, let's get to the video. Okay, so to begin with, let's talk about uh, their decision to get a puppy from a breeder. In another one of their, uh, on another one of their channels, Jordan and her mom talk about the process of deciding whether they're going to go with a rescue dog or a, uh, or a puppy from a breeder. I, I think this is significant. I think it's really important. I know that there's going to be a lot of people who just say in every situation you should always do this. I think that's, quite frankly, I think that's irresponsible. Uh, not everybody's situation calls for a rescue dog. Uh, equally said, not every situation is best suited for a breeder for a new puppy. So I think I was actually really impressed with their process. They took several months to evaluate uh, the kind of dog they wanted, the characteristics of that dog, and then the needs for that that dog would have growing up, especially early on in the puppy stages. And uh, so I was, I was really impressed with that that process that they went through, I think every dog owner should go through that process. Uh, they ended up with getting a puppy from a breeder. Now, if you're going to get a puppy from a breeder, you want to make sure that you get a puppy pack. She gave us a pack of toys stuff, and though. Stuff. We have like his toy, and we have some food, and like his food to like integrate with the food. Oh, that we oh. <gasps> Did you get a toy? And it smells like probably like probably what home. he's used to. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll just keep his little toy okay. near up. Uh, but you need to make sure that you get a puppy pack from the breeder. The best way to do that is to reach out and just talk with the breeder a week or so before you go get your, your puppy. Make sure that your pack has a few things in it. Uh, I really like to get a blanket or a toy, something that's, that's been with mom and the litter mates so that the puppy has something familiar uh, those first few days home while it's getting used to your, to your house to its new, its new home. Uh, I, an absolute essential, I don't care if it comes with a collar or a leash, I do think that it's absolutely essential that you find out and get from the puppy, uh, for, from the breeder, uh, a little bag of kibble, something that will last three or four days, the, kind, the exact kind of kibble that the puppy's been eating since it's been weaned off of mama. That's gonna make sure that your puppy's stomach doesn't go through a really nasty uh, transition phase. So, so make sure that's a part of your puppy pack. Well, one of the things that I think we overlook, especially if you're traveling a distance to go get your puppy, Jordan and her mom stopped, even though it was late at night, to let the puppy have a, a little potty break. And although Jordan makes this statement, uh, she might be a little bit overconfident in her puppy's abilities. And I'm like, he's so smart. He knows. He already knows go potty. I'm yeah, like, he's so quick. How does he get it? <laughs> I don't know. I guess the breeder probably trained him a little bit. I'm not sure that the puppy is potty trained yet or that it knows when it can and can't go to the bathroom, but all dogs in, uh, in general have a preference for a situation when they want to go to the bathroom. If they're being held on your lap, uh, unless the puppy has to go to the bathroom really bad and it's been a really long time, uh, they're more than likely not going to just go to the bathroom. They want to be able to, to walk around, sniff, find their spot, and, uh, and go to the bathroom. So. Getting the, the puppy out on a leash and giving it the opportunity to go to the bathroom is excellent. I really want to emphasize the fact that Jordan has the puppy on a leash. It's, it's really a frightening thing if you're in a parking lot and your, your puppy gets something that gets their attention and bolts. There's really potential for, for a, bad, a bad situation. So make sure your puppy's on a leash. And I would, stop, I, wouldn't, I would stop at least every two hours or so to give your puppy an opportunity to, to get out, walk around, stretch their legs. And, and get that, that bathroom break. I didn't go to bed till super late, and then I was up at two hour inter intervals with him. She got taking no him sleep outside. last night. But on the plus no. side, he had absolutely no accidents. <laughs> yeah, not he, last night, like, he did today. Okay, <laughs> he did today, but he didn't have any accidents uh, like nighttime in his crate. Okay, Jordan mentions that first uh, first night at home, she got up every two hours. I think that's a really, that that's an excellent model to follow. Uh, she brags about, and she, she Kind of gets really excited about the fact that her puppy hasn't had an accident. 
Uh, when your puppy first gets home, the first three or four days, if your puppy has an accident, it's not your puppy having an accident, it's you having an accident. He, he only so had accidents today because we weren't so watching him very well, like while Jordan was gone, like me and the boys. And because were we weren't watching the cues of him, I mean, we were watching him, but we weren't say, listening to the you cues. You guys were sitting, you were sitting on the ground We were right there him. by him. You were like actually, you were watching them, it's just you didn't exactly. look at his body language close enough to realize. And Jordan knows the body language. Because it's super subtle cues that he's just like, oh, potty, and then yeah. it's like He gets restless, hurry. like he wants to go somewhere, and yeah. you're like, oh. So yeah. that's the only reason. Uh, Jordan and her mom kind of go back and forth and talk about that the next morning, that uh, the dog does have an accident in the house, but it's because the people that are with the dog aren't paying attention to body language. Uh, they talk about body language in there, but they don't really mention what body language you're looking for. So let me tell you, if you've got a new puppy, what you wanna be looking for so that you know when it's time to take your puppy out. If your dog is wandering around, or even if you have them on a leash and you notice that they start sniffing around and looking for corners or going heading to the back of uh, back behind furniture, those are some real, real significant indicators that your puppy needs to go to the bathroom. Uh, and then obviously, you know, if you notice your puppy starting to squat, you might be too late, but if you've got an opportunity, pick your puppy up and do the 40 yard dash to get to the backyard or get to the backyard or wherever you're going to have your dog go to the bathroom. Uh, I, also potty, uh, potty training tips, make sure that you're taking your dog to the same place every time. If you can identify where you want your dog to go to the bathroom up front, uh, before you start taking him outside or even before you get him home then take them out to that spot every single time. Dogs are creatures of habit. And, uh, and so if they get into the habit of going to that spot to go to the bathroom, then later on as you take them outside and take them to that spot, they kind of know. Like I said earlier, they, uh, they like to have the right situation or their space for, for potty breaks. And, uh, and so you can create that by just taking them to the place where you want them to, to go to the bathroom and do their business. Okay, one thing that I would suggest that maybe Jordan do a little differently uh, in her video on 24 hours with her puppy, you see her, it's, it's pretty late and they're getting ready to go to bed. Jordan's letting the dog uh, eat and get some water. I would suggest holding off on the water uh, at least an hour and a half or longer before bedtime. It'll, uh, that way when your dog goes out to go to the bathroom right before bedtime, they don't have, you, you, the bladder's not gonna fill up right away, so when they go to the bathroom, they're gonna pretty much drain what's in their system. Uh, that's gonna help them be successful early on. So don't, don't feed and water your dog right before bedtime. Okay, socialization. I've talked about that on this channel before, how it's really, really important to give your dog uh, the best opportunity for success in all kinds of situations later in life. Uh, one of the most challenging uh, situations is introducing a new puppy, to a home that already has pets. Uh, Jordan and her family have, it looks like maybe some kind of a spaniel, maybe a cocker spaniel, uh, an older dog, uh, maybe seven, eight years old. Uh, Logan looks like, like I say, he looks like a cocker spaniel and they're bringing Atlas into this space that has previously been dominated by Logan. And so introducing the two uh, together is gonna be really, really important for the puppy's success, as well as to avoid any injuries. So a couple of things, if you go to their, their video on uh, introducing Logan uh, to the new puppy, there's a bunch of things that they do really, really well. Uh, one thing, I'll start with one thing that I would suggest that I would do differently. Uh, they take the dogs out into a park and where there's a lot of distractions. Uh, that's probably too open of a space for me. I, I would like maybe outside in the backyard someplace that Logan is a little more comfortable, already has his feel. Uh, I would definitely avoid places where Logan is going to be territorial. So anything with his, anywhere near his food bowl, uh, his bed, around his toys at least to begin with, I would avoid introducing your puppy to a dog in those places where they're going to have more tutorial feelings, more ownership of that. But I, I, I like staying a little bit more contained, uh, maybe a backyard uh, it would be my preference. But Jordan and her family do a great job getting Logan distracted, doing other things. Uh, one of the things that I like really early on is, is when Jordan does this. Logan, Logan, you want a treat? Come here. Good boy. Notice how she lets the dog see the puppy first and then she calls him back and the dog responds to her. That's, that's giving you a very definite indicator that, the, that your older dog is not getting hyper-focused, getting... Um, overly worked up by the, by the new pup. 
And, uh, and it also gives you an indicator of the fact that uh, you're, you still have control over your dog, that your dog's paying attention to you uh, rather than replying simply on instinct, whether that's to attack or to just go play. Now, one thing that I would suggest if you watch this little clip as they get the dogs closer together, you notice that they've done this so well, you know, eking closer and closer, that Logan's totally comfortable uh, with the puppy. However, one thing I would change, notice right here how Jordan is the one holding the leash and she's the one right there in the mix. I think if it were me and I were doing this and it was the first interaction, I think I would hand the leash off back to dad so that, and the reason is, is because dad's behind Logan and if something were to happen, uh, let's say the puppy acts, let's say the puppy gets overly excited and nips the older dog uh, and, and that creates a, an aggressive reaction from the older dog. Dad's in a position where he can quickly pull the dog back rather than Jordan being in the middle and not having, you know, she's got such a long leash that there's not much that she can do with that leash. So that, that would be one thing that I would do differently. I would have somebody behind the dog holding the leash. And then I would also make sure that the puppy was on a leash as well, uh, rather than just trying to hold onto his collar. If that dog gets loose, uh, if that puppy gets loose, then pulling the big dog back may not do any good if the puppy follows him. So keep both dogs on the leash and then have people behind them holding those leashes. And then Jordan in the middle there in, kind of overseeing the interaction. Other than that, I mean, this is the ideal this is the ideal first meeting for an existing pet with a new puppy. Okay, just a few more tips uh, from Jordan's video when she does a 24 hour, kind of a 24 hour vlog with the puppy. Uh, and just some tips you take from that. Number one, uh, I, I think it's a good thing that they're starting to work on simple obedient commands. They're luring with treats. They're getting the dog used to uh, the commands early on. Notice that there's no discipline. There's, it's totally treat focused, reward based. I think this is great for an eight, nine, 10 week old puppy. Uh, it's gonna make training, it's gonna give the puppy the idea that training is fun. Uh, the other thing that I think is, you know, very typical, Jordan Dot mentions the fact that her puppy won't stop biting her clothes or her skin. Uh, that's gonna be a long process, getting your dog to stop biting permanently. Uh, if you're interested in, uh, teaching your dog, getting your new puppy to stop biting, check out this video right here. It's all about how to teach your dog bite inhibition, which is a really important process. I describe it in the video, but it's something that you do in the first, uh, you know, you really have six months uh, of your dog's life to teach them bite inhibition, and uh, which is really incredibly important skill. So I'll ex I explain that in the video. Other than that, I just think it's, uh, Jordan's well on her way. Obviously from this, she's, she's experienced with pups. Uh, she's trained dogs before. She's well on her way to an extremely successful relationship with little Atlas. Uh, I'd love, I'm, I'm excited to you know, keep watching and, and see this dog get bigger. It is a mini Australian Shepherd uh, where earlier on, I, you know, when I first watched the video, I wondered if it was an Australian Shepherd, uh, the full size. Uh, the mini Australian Shepherds, uh, they stay a little bit smaller. They still have some of the Shepherd instincts, the herding. Uh, Jordan, if, if she doesn't take a firm hand in the training, which it looks like she and her brother have got this down, but a more tentative, I would not suggest a mini Australian Shepherd for a tentative or first time uh, dog trainer owner, just because if you don't have a firm control and a definite program that you're following with the training, the Shepherd in these dogs will come out and they'll start kind of issuing the command, so to speak. They can become a very bossy dog. Uh, even the mini shepherds have that in them. Uh, however, on the flip side of that, if you're very comfortable, you know, establishing control and, and, and a firm hand, and with that, I don't mean by being stern or mean or angry. I just mean very confident in what you want the dog to do and giving orders and instructions and expecting uh, your dog to respond. If you don't do that, your dog can, can try and take over the family uh, if they don't feel like you're doing a good enough job. So uh, it seems like Jordan's well on her way to, a, to an awesome experience with a dog. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video. If you think that Jordan made a good choice with the mini Australian Shepherd, go ahead and give me a like down below. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel as we're gonna be digging into lots of different dog breeds, the pros and the cons, and how do we get them, uh, how do we get them trained so that we have the most incredible relationships with our dogs possible. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video. We'll